I'm going to do an activity with you later so that you can explore what a Desmos activity feels and looks like and experience the Desmos activity. All right, so this is the, the home screen of Desmos. Um, first, we're going to look at some tools that is available. Um, unfortunately, I am not a high school teacher, but there is for high school teachers that is with us today. There are a few calculators that is free, totally free. So the first one is your graph calculator. So I'm just going to open up and show you some, um, only one that I can remember. So I just want to show you one, a simple one. And um, colleagues, remember what I'm going to explain to you is going to be based on primary school because I'm currently teaching grade four and seven maths and also other subjects. So I'm using Desmos not only for mathematics, but if I if you are more experienced with the software, you can utilize this um, program for any subject. But for today, we will only focus on mathematics. Um, right, so this is a simple graph calculator. So what you basically do is you just type in an equation and instantly the graph will draw on this graph paper. So this is how it works. So you can just type in as many as you want um, equations and it will draw that specific line on the graph. Um, so I'm just going to go back by clicking on Desmos. It should take me back to the original page. Let me just close the graph and leave that one. Another tool that is available is a scientific calculator. We all know how expensive this calculator can be in stores with the internet connection. You get free access to a free calculator that learners can use on their phone or wherever by making use of Desmos. Um, due to the weather, our internet is a bit slow. So yeah. There's your scientific calculator, totally free. Learners can make use of these functions that is available on the calculator and so on. So I'm just going to click on Desmos once again, just to jump back. I'm just giving you a sound understanding of what is available. There is also a four function calculator and so on. All right, next up, you have classroom. So this is for teachers. I'm going to uh, explain this to you in a minute. And this is for students. I'm going to explain this for you in the next 40 minutes. And then there's Desmos curriculum. Now you need to remember that everything in this program is based on the curriculum of America because they are using Desmos on a daily basis. So everything on here is based on their curriculum. However, you can utilize this program in your for your own use. And then on this side, you have your login and sign up. So first, you're going to obviously have to sign up if you're going to start using Desmos to enhance the teaching and learning progress in your or process in your class. So if I want to sign up, I can just go click on sign up. It's quite simple. So you're obviously going to read through the T's and C's and you're going to agree with that and with that. And then if you are using your own computer, you can just make use of these two funks features. So it's first sign up with Google or if you are using an Apple device, you can sign up with Apple. So if you're going to use your personal computer, you can just click sign up Google and your accounts will be available and it will instantly sign you in. Or you can make use of the email address sign in feature where you will be typing in, for example, not www, but for example, your Gmail account. Let me just show you. So it's my WCG Schools account at a med.bordne at WCG Schools, for example, .gov.za. And then you can put in your first name and second name and as well your your password. So I'm not going to register this account. I'm just showing you examples. And then again, you need to go through the T's and C's and privacy settings. And then you're obviously going to create your account. 
So that is how you sign up. Now for me, for instance, I don't have to sign up. I will strictly just log in using my, my Gmail account. And I'm just gonna look for my account. All right, so there's my account that I will be using today. And once you are signed in, you'll notice that the name that you registered for will appear on top. Right, then here, if I'm going to use the drop down arrow, you can obviously use the logout if you are done working on Desmos. And then there's account settings. So there's your personal information. If you're not happy with your name, you can always change your name. If you want to insert your surname, that is an optional feature. And also, if you want to change your address, you can do that by clicking there. And if you no longer are no longer interested in using Desmos, you can obviously delete your account. If you by accident use a, uh, the incorrect account, you can always delete your account. Um, also, if you would like to change your password, you can make use of change password um, feature and you will be able to change your password via your Gmail account that you use. So if I want to change my password, I'm going to click email, send email, and then I'll follow the prompts to change my password. So that is it for sign up, login and account settings. If I scroll down, you'll find some nice, um, so so Desmos is a lot of competitions um, creating art using mathematics. Um, unfortunately, we didn't participate in any of these competitions, but they will always update you with the latest or winners here at the bottom. So this is the contest for last year. And you can even go and have a look at your own time. As you can see, most of it says USA, 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 because this is quite a popular program over there. Right. So that is it. Now that I'm signed in, I want to go to all the activities and see what is a Desmos activity, for example. So there are three ways how you can actually um, get access to the activities. And the first one is by this home screen. You can go here at the bottom where it says browse activities. So if I'm going to go in there, it's going to take me to this page. This is where all the Desmos activities is. So if I'm going to go back, I can also access that page from classroom. Remember, I showed you earlier and I said I'm going to show you this in a minute, explain this to you for a minute. So there you can see classroom for teachers. So if I go in there, it should also take me to this page. And the last one is if you are logged into your account already, let me just, um, if you are using your personal computer and you already signed in on your computer, you can basically just type in teacher Desmos and it should take you straight to that page as well because you are already signed into your Gmail account. So there you can see by Google, via Google, I'm signed into my account because I'm signed into my account on my browser. Right. So this is where all Desmos activities is. So first, you'll find the home. But before I explain this to you, I just want to show you the this feature here, which is the search one. So for example, if you would like to search something, it can be anything and what we are currently um, busy with, with the great force is time. So I'm just gonna type in time, and then I'm gonna say enter. And there you can see already a lot of activities regarding to time will be available. So the search allow you just to narrow your search for certain activity. So you can type in any topic that you are teaching 
and the activities will be available. Now let's um, talking time. Let's try this activity. So maybe I want to try this activity with my learners. I can click on it and it will take me to this page. Now let me just quickly uh, explain this to you. So first of all, you need to remember that most of the slides or the content that is created by Desmos are content that are developed by um, IT specialists, which means most of the slides are JavaScript. Now I explained to you earlier that JavaScript is interactive web content. Now we as teacher, we can't create, for example, something like this, where you can interact with the image. But you later on, when you used to this, to working with Desmos, you would be able to, to edit, for example, a lesson that is created by Desmos. Um, and that is for another session. For now, I just want to give you an idea of what Desmos is and how you can start working with Desmos. So when you leave here today, you would be able to create your own lesson or whatever using Desmos and play around and figure out things how to use Desmos. Alright, next it gives you more or less the duration of the lesson and then also the which grade. So like I've said, this is an American program, so it says elementary grades. So this is primary school. So on this part, it says on what device this specific lesson is compatible. Now, they, this is only recommendations, colleagues. So they would recommend that you only do this lesson on a PC or a, a laptop or, 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 or a tower box, a desktop. Right, then here, yeah, they also give you a description of your lesson. So it will say like, for example, I will use this for my grade fours because we were, when we work with times, we consider the fives. So this is perfect for my grade four learners if we are doing time. So if I'm gonna scroll down, if I'm gonna scroll down, I will get the slides. So this is what the learners, for example, will work on. And underneath, they normally would give you some additional notes, such as an activity or whatever. But unfortunately with this one, there's nothing available. So I'm gonna open up the slide and this is the preview that I will get. So basically, let me just do that. This is what the learner will see. And this is what you will go through to, to understand, will my learners be able to do this? So for example, this activity it says, set the clock so that it will, so that it shows 6.45. So we all know this must be at 45, the long one. So I'm just gonna, okay, let me just first move this one. More or less there. And then this one will be more or less there by the nine, for example. And now I'm going to click on see the answer. So there you can see it's interactive and it's on a web base. So if I'm going to say see the answer. And it looks correct because it's only this one that is slightly off and that one is slight, slightly off. Right. So now I'm going to move to my next slide and we're going to play later up with an activity and then you will experience this first then. So this one said, select the clock so that it shows a quarter past four. Now for instance, if a child get this one wrong, um, quarter past four and he, for example, says quarter to five. All right, so maybe a child is doing this. See answer, the child will see that he or she were actually wrong and then they can actually just redo it by going back or in this case they can't redo it so i'm just gonna go to the next one and the same goes 10 o'clock so now they have to adjust it to 10 o'clock again so they are actually playing around with the content and remember 
factors can be added. So if you are, for example, an Afrikaans teacher, you can edit this lesson and change this to Afrikaans. Or even is it Koza? Doesn't matter. So I'm just going to close that. So this is just a simple example of a Desmos lesson. And what is nice about this, every slide builds up to something better or something more complete or challenging for the learner. So they normally start the first slide with much easier and then the last slide will be a bit more complex. All right. So that is just for search. So now I'm going to jump back so I can just click on Desmos or I can click on home to jump back to my first home screen. All right, then you have under home. So currently I've selected home. I do get my featured collection. So these are my featured collections. It's just something that by default will pop up. So if I'm going to go to view all, it will give me every lesson in the feature collection so those is basically all lessons in desmos so i'm just going to jump back and if i'm going to scroll down it will give me the new lessons that is available on desmos now let's start off with a starter screen for example so these are nice screens that can be used so why so this is basically called a collection because in starter screen you'll find seven activities um, in elementary grades you find nine activities distance learning for grade eight you'll find ten different activities now if i go down if i scroll down for example um, you get featured activities this is normally the new activities that has been added recently so there you can see it's not fully completed but you can try it or play around with it because the developers are still busy with this activities for example so let me go to start the screen again and i'm just going to use the first one also to show you to give you an idea of what is going on here so here you can see this is a, a screen that has been created by Desmos and I have used the screen in all of my collections that I have created if I've been using the screen for example so if I'm going to scroll down I will find what the learner the students preview so you can either click on here or you can click on student preview for example and it will open up what the learner will see we will go, we, I will show you later what you as a teacher will see. All right, so this one is, how are you feeling today? So now the learner can actually say sad and or excited or in the middle. So this will give you a nice idea of the mood of the children. So what they've added to this slide is, if you'd like, say more about your response, the response below. So I'm excited because let's say because we are doing this most and submit so this submit means your teacher would be able to read what you have written down now there's also an option where you can say it with class but that depends on how the teacher has set this specific program so if you set it for class to view in class then all the learners would be able to read each other's comments or how they are feeling, which is good for reading. Um, the next one, for example, um, they have to draw how they are feeling. So I'm just going to try to draw now with my mouse. Um, I'm just going to draw an heart. Oh, what an ugly heart. But right, here are some formatting styles available. So that is your pin. If you need to draw a line, you can select a line and this would be able to allow you to actually draw some straight lines. So I'm just going to make an arrow. I used to draw this when I was younger and don't let me forget that one. Um, the art wasn't now so ugly. Um, then you have some text so you can actually type something out. And then we have something for maths. Remember, this program was developed to improve mathematics. And then you have here on this side, you have your 
colors so if you want a different color to write draw a line or type out something you can use the color feature here and also the size of your text so it's currently on text so it will show the size of the text but if i select the pen it will give me the thickness of the pen so there you go and also there's your eraser you are also welcome to erase anything that is there and what is nice about this is when your learners is doing this you as the teacher can actually see the live drawing so while they are drawing you would be able to see how they are drawing so this is a nice feature um what is next let me just see okay there you just have to say something and next day where are you at today so if you are free if the learner is feeling negative the learner can move this but energetic or positive energetic or positive but tired and they can respond to you and you can actually read because sometimes our learners don't know or don't or isn't confident enough to speak to you but they will write you something for you to read um they also um select the graph that best represent your stress level um i won't go with that either with that so i'm just going straight up and now you can say anything uh, you like and say it with your teacher for example um here's another one where they can draw actually a graph and so these are all starter screens that you can actually use just to get a a feeling of 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 the mood of your learners and it really helps yeah you can put in a, a statement it can be a rule um, always raise your hand for example when speaking if everyone agrees to that it is also helpful um to use this tool so like i've said you can edit this or if you also just want to use this specific slide in your lesson you can somehow get this specific slide into your lesson um then i'm going to jump back desmos next you have your most popular so these are popular um slides that that can be used by desmos and these are slides that are often used by 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 educators using desmos um yes is this is a nice one i love this one this is just getting to know each other So for example you type in your name and it will appear on the card but I, the internet is a bit slow now or oh, let me see yeah Matt no what oh yeah so if you type it in what I like to be called Matt and it will instantly appear on your card for example because this is a javascript program um there are more things that you can go through for example there's another sketch that you can draw um there are topics that you so yeah you can even have a sense of what your learners enjoy a lot about mathematics for example um i'm just going to close that so there you can see as a similar one of what we did earlier in this one um right so i'm just going to go back to my home screen again and this is most popular so these are the most popular um desmos lessons that are being used by teachers quite often top 30 then you have feature collection we've went through that there so this is the same like we did earlier so all so here you can see there are topics and if for every topic there are a certain amount of activity so there's seven There's seven. There's seven calculus. There's four. If I go down, so this is all mathematics, but teaching it in a more fun um, way. So they are more in your 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 um, feature collections. If I'm gonna go back, you'll get your your stuff. So this is Desmos lessons that you have created. So if I'm gonna go to Desbody history. these are activities for example this one is still running since 16th august or now it's going to run till 16th august next year and this picture making is one that is done so no one will be able to get access to this unless i reactivate this lesson but we're going to get there now there's two d shapes 
Um, then on this side is the number of students that actually join the activities. Um, if I'm going to go back to this side, you'll find classes. So like I've mentioned earlier, um, unfortunately, our learners don't have um, Google accounts. So it's quite difficult to manage or use this at our school. So currently we are running it just without signing in. Only the teacher needs to sign in and then we, we, we give our learners a code to join a certain lesson. But if otherwise, if, it, it, if at your school, the learners do have accounts, you can make use of this and then you can just send your activities there and they will be able to just work on their own pace through that activities, for example. Um, I'm gonna go back. Then you have your custom activities these are all activities that you you created so i've created this little one just for us to let later play around with desmos um there's a lot of interactive content i've just take some slides from all from a lot of different um activities and paste it in there so there's no um certain order of how the lessons are built up. It's just a lot of different slides. Um, then there's more lessons. So these are all lessons that you created. So there you can see Baskinder. This is an Afrikaans lesson that I've created. Um, if I scroll down, 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 I know when I've started using Desmos, I've used it for technology. There's more Baskinder. And also I've used it for natural science. Um, but this is now all yeah, that is now all mathematics lessons. Um, if I'm going to go to collections, for example, these are collections that I've created. So if I want to demonstrate something that I've trained um, Metro East, then all my activities is in there. These are all my activities for grade 7, 8, 2. These are all my, my activities for Calcfontein. These are all my maths activities. So there you can see the number of activities. So these are mostly activities that are available, for example, by home. Um, for example, if I'd like this activity, I would just click on the plus and I would select in which collection I want that specific activity to be so, so that I can easily access those activities all right so that is the background and basic understanding of desmos the home page now we're gonna go look at an activity and the activity i want to show you for example a nice activity is one of the new activities which is the picture making i just want to show you how you how this how a lesson a desmos lesson can be fun um, so if I'm going to go up, as you can see, this activity is not completely done. So they will still um, wrap up this lesson and then there will be more features available and you will be able to see on which device this is um, better to work on. Um, right, at the bottom, like I've said, here are some additional notes. So if I'm going to click on it, it will open and you can actually download this activity for your learners and they can do it on a on both pen and paper offline so while that one is downloading let me just scroll up again and open up my student preview so this is what the student preview looks like and this is the introduction of the lesson so if i'm going to go to this side you'll see that this is the activity that is available for your learners and it's based on the activity that Desmos created. So you can either just print it or download it for free. All right, so everything is for free, colleagues. There's no monthly subscriptions or yearly subscriptions. It's totally free. So the first question is, you making a picture what are some things you need? So I'm just going to type in cheese, more cheese, and more cheese. All right. Sorry for that. 
cheese, cheese, cheese. And then it says here, say with class. If I'm going to click on the... Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, colleagues. I have to quickly mute. In Mark 3, dear as a Sorry, colleagues. So I'm going to continue now. Right. So it says, edit my response. The learner would be able to, if they want to change something, they can just click there and change whatever they need to. And then there's three other students. Responses would show up here. So if every learner is working on this specific slide and they've clicked say what class, only three will be available for that student to see. But you as the teacher will be able to use everything. Then there's an additional feature. So for example, if the child needs a calculator, the child can only click on them and the calculator will be available. So I'm just going to close that. Now I'm going to jump to the next one. And, uh, and then you'll notice there's source, so there's the pizza, and they can actually play around with this. So maybe if they don't want any source on their pizza, for example, they can remove the source. Or oh, they don't want too many um, cheese, they can do that as well. But they can actually play around with it. There's your pepperonis. Um, I want some tomato, despite the, the gout. <laughs> and then there's some mushrooms. I want full of mushrooms. There's some onions. And, and this is so fun for the learners, especially primary school, just to play around with this. Now I'm going to go to the next slide. Now remember I told you Desmos lessons, they built up. So look at this word problem solving. And it says, you use six ounces of of sauce to make one pizza how many sauce do you need for two pizzas so it's obviously gonna be 12 and if i'm gonna say check my work there you can see javascript is kicking in and there it says correct but what if the child for example said five well, let's say seven check my work look what is happening now so now it's only for seven. Now the learner can actually see, but the learner needs more. So now the learner can say, what about 10? Check my work. It will do that. And now the learner will see, but he needs a little more. And what if the child says 15, for example? Let's see what is happening. So there you can see now we're wasting. So now the child can actually see what is happening when he or she is typing in the amount. If I'm going to the next one, let me just make this one correct before I proceed. The next one, okay, there is it correct. The next one, it says, you use 14 ounces of cheese to make two pizzas. How much cheese do we need for three? So obviously, it's going to be 21 check my work and now you can see and the same thing happens when you are putting in more so for example if the child says 28 for example this is what is going to happen so there we're wasting an extra pizza so now the child can see that 28 is actually for four pizzas and then you can go to the next one they're talking about the degrees, two pizzas at 800. How many will four be? So if we're going to say 1,600, let's see, submit. And then the learner can also explain why and say what class. Next one, so this is slide six from 12. If we double the number of pizzas, it makes sense to double the amount of source. What else do you think it would think it makes sense to double so now the child can say okay let's double the amount of cheese the amount of each topping and maybe we will double the delivery fee so now they go beyond that and also we're going to double the price of pizzas for example now i'm going to go to the next one and yeah they have to work out 
the the ingredient so it says ivan designed a vegetarian pizza the table shows what is needed to make two pizzas so there's two pizzas what is needed to make six so there it says for sauce two pizzas needs six and six pizzas so it's times three so now the child can say for okay for tomato times three it's going to be 60 times three is going to be 90 and times three is going to be 72 so what if the child says for example 74 so let's check my work and i know you can picture how fun this will be for the learner so there it says tomato is right onion is right too many peppers so now the child can for example make 70 and try it again here the pictures are being pulled not enough peppers so now what if the child said the correct answer check my work and there you go it's correct so now the child can go to the next slide into the next slide and so on and so on and so on all right so how do we actually get this to the learner which is the most important part so i hope you would be able to join soon but before we go there um let me open up the activity that I have created for you. So like I've said, it's just um, a lot of slides. Let me just do that. So as you can see, it's from different different lessons that I've taken slides from and built a Desmos lesson. However, you can build a lesson from scratch by putting in some pictures, you can put in some tables, you can have some multiple choice, etc. So this is what the lesson is. So how are you feeling today? You can actually play around and I hope you would be able to sign in so that you can submit so that I can show you what you as a teacher will get on your side. The second one, there's an input output. So try it. So this is basically just something like this. Good. And now they have to say what could rule one be? So now they, they have to figure out, do they divide by three? Do they subtract? Take the one digit or divide by two and add five. Next one is a fish. So this thing needs to move up. So now you need to decide what is happening here and submit um, for example add one so let's see if it's this one there you go and they take a picture of that um, next one is um, so this is for if you would like to collect data from your learners maybe um, who wants this color and that color and i hope everyone would do that so i can show you the results on my side so which fruit do you like best um, i'll have a mango and you can actually say it with your class and so this class can see as well um then what is your favorite animal um, i also i love dogs so there's a tree <laughs> for animals um then the next one there's a graph there's a graph where they actually so i don't know if you can notice on this side there is those little dots so if i move my cursor on the graph I can actually see what is happening. So if I'm going to draw up, it moves, it moves. If I go this way, it more or less stands still. If I go down, it reverses. So that is something that our learners really struggle to understand about a line in the actual movement. So for example, if this is my graph and I press play, the learner can actually see how the movement happens. So this is a graph that they draw and they can actually see how it moves up until the end. So that is a nice activity and you can decide how you would utilize this one in your class. Um, yeah, who is the person that all I would like to have lunch with? So you can write anything. In my case, for example, it obviously would be a call. Um, then there's this activity that I showed you earlier. Type in your name, you would like to be called, 
I use the pronouns he or she. Um, then confidence check. So yeah, they must just indicate or the learners just need to indicate um, what topic, whatever you are explaining so that you can get a feeling on how many content did the learners grasp during your activity. Um, then there's this one. So deal, let me just see. Oh, so there's cards and they want both to be the same sum. So for example, if I'm going to put a, let me see. Yeah, let me put the four there in a one in a two in a three. And then I'm going to say submit. The robot will check and it says correct. But what if you are, for example, if you are wrong, let's put the three there in the one year in submit. The robot will say it's incorrect. So that is a nice activity also. This one is almost like a competition. So let's press play. Okay, let's first check. Why is this? Okay, this is now just, let me type in a number. Um, I'm not sure what is going on here. I think this thing is freezing because just to um, Turtles needs to race and you need to look at the distance and then you need to for two seconds you can either stop it and then you can see the distance that the turtle did travel and then you should just type it in but somehow it's freezing here on my side so maybe it's gonna work when we work on this specific activity um, right so how do you get this to your learners which is the most important part. So here you can see, I didn't add a description. The only description that I added to this lesson was example one. And my name of the lesson is Metro North. And it's by Adam Matt Baldy. There you can see I've created this and I published it two hours ago. So, uh, which means before I published it, it wasn't available for everyone and there was no slides underneath here but once i've clicked publish it means anyone using desmos would be able to use this specific lesson so there you can see it's not recommended for 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 mobile phones however learners can use um desmos on their mobile phones it's just certain slides won't be um, so brilliant on the mobile phone but it will work perfectly on the tablet and a laptop however i am allowing my learners to use mobile phones if they have phones to do my lessons on their mobile phones All right so how do we get this to our learners we make use of the option on this side that says aside so if i'm gonna go to the drop down arrow there you'll find assigned to your class. So if you created a class, for example, in here, you can just throw this lesson in there and they should get an email notification telling them that you've um, assigned some work for them to complete. However, the other one is single session code. This is the one that we often use. Um, so does this easy access for the learner on any device or mobile phone tablet or laptop or desktop so if i'm gonna click on single session code this is the message that will pop up so there you can see see that the code will be active we only look at this but this is if your learners need to sign in so we're not going to make use of that so for now i just want this code that i will create to be active for 48 hours so after 48 hours no one will get access to this lesson if you want your learners to complete this over two weeks you can click two weeks if you have a desmos lesson with over 100 slides that you have created and you want your learners to work the entire year on it you can have the entire year and just um, control the pace of the work and I'm going to show you now, you as the teacher can control the pace of the slides. So for now, I'm just going to keep it on 48 hours. And then I'm going to say, create invite code. 
Right, so this will be your invite code that the learners will use. And I'm going to show you now how you can get access to that. And it says when um, this will stop. So it will be in the next two days. And also the number of students that will be that will use or, or will be active in the slides will appear there. And this is the date and time the code has been created. So there you can see it's now 20 minutes past four and we are almost done with today's session. Then you have dashboard. Now this is where you are going to monitor your learners. So if I'm gonna go in there, it's gonna give me my slides in my workspace as a teacher. I'm just gonna wait for it to open up. Let me close this one so long. And in the meanwhile, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna open up incognito mode. Let me have this on the other side. So by the way, you can split screen by, oh, there's Fergus is already in. Um, well done, Fergus. Uh, Fergus, so I'm going to go control in this way. Uh, so control arrow is allowing you to split your screen. It's a very effective tool that you can use. Um, but unfortunately, I have to first open up a browser. So there's Melissa is there as well. Um, so let me just open up a new browser so that I can go into incognito mode. Um, right, there you go. So I'm just going to split the screen again and I'm going to open up my teacher's view. Here I can see they are moving across. So on this side, I just want to show you how the, the learner will get access to this. But before we go there, um, let me just explain a few things to you. So you can, join, you can allow your learners to join the session by sending them this code so there you can oh sorry this link so you can basically just copy it and go to whatsapp or whatsoever put in the link and they should join immediately on your lesson or you can allow them to go to this website or browser student.desmos.com and it will take them straight to this page let me just show you to this page where you need to insert that specific code. So we're going to continue without signing in and they can enter their name and go and this will take them straight. So I'm just going to say bold me for this one and go and this will take them straight into your lesson. Or the learner can go to Google, type in student Desmos, enter, and if they click on the first link, it should take them to the screen where they will insert this code, or there's another way how they can access. So if I'm going to type in Desmos, they can go there by the home screen, remember this. So remember I told you earlier, I'm going to explain you why this is for. This is also for, if I'm going to click on here, it's going to take me to exactly this specific page where you need to insert the code that the teacher will provide. And it's taking a bit longer here. There you can see. Now I'm just going to go back. Or the learner can just type in the code in there. So that is also another way for the learners to get access to your lesson. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave the screen up and then I just want to split my screen again. So now I'm by the student's view. So the student needs to go to Desmos, not Desmos Tutu, but Desmos Student. Here's my Desmos Student. Student Desmos. And while that is loading, I will copy the link into the chat as well so that you can where's the chat why can't i see the chat isn't available on my side do i have we a... have already posted it in the chat sir okay thank you so much okay but i'm also gonna put in the link so that they can click on the link and take them straight into it 
Thank you, Melissa. All right. So, Dev, I've copied this this link, so you can basically just click on it, and it will take you straight to the lesson. And what you would be able to see, let me just put in the code. So, there's the code. It's five eight um, V A um, eight G and join. Right. So now I have two views. This side is what the, the, the learner will see. And I'm going to say continue without signing in. And this one, I'm going to make Adam, Matt, and go. Their statum is in. And Adam, Matt is in. So now I just wait and so that I can show you exactly. So this, let me just move this. No, I don't want, I don't want to move. Okay, All right. So this is what the learner would see. And this is what you as the teacher will see. Now the blue highlighted part is, indica is an indication on which slide you currently is. So I can see that Melissa is busy with slide four. I can see Fergus is all the way. I don't know how far he went. And if I'm going to go to the next slide, it will instantly jump here because this is Adamet. There I can see my name and there's my name on the board. So I can see if Adam is moving through the slides, how this thing is also moving on the slides. The dot means that you are interacting with the content or you are done with that part. Um, then um, I want to show you these important features. The first one is pause. So if I'm going to click on pause, no one would be able to work on Desmos because now it's paused. And this is a, a, a brilliant tool and a, a brilliant opportunity for you now to do some explanation or give some instructions to your learners. So once you click pause, then everyone should instantly look at you because now they won't be able to work. So if you are teaching Desmos maybe in your computer lab and you would like to get everyone's attention, you can make use of the pause. Every screen will pause and then you can give your instructions. And once you unpause, I want you to take note of the green color. So if I'm going to unpause, it will turn blue. And now I would be able to move around the slides or work on the slides. Um, the next one is the pacing, which is very important. So, for example, I'm on slide five already. Fiergas is, I don't know, he's probably slide 11 or 10. So if I pace my work, so for example, I've select paste and now one till three. So if I'm going to click restrict, I will automatically jump back to the last person there you can see everyone will jump back so if you be out beyond slide three you will jump back to slide three and you won't be able to go any further than that so now you are actually controlling the pace of your learners so you can edit it by so if i'm going to give access to another slide i can basically just click on the plus and another slide will open and now I would be able to next. And after that, I won't even be able to go any further. Then you have your anonymous. So if I'm going to click, let me just stop the pacing. So if I want, I don't, if I'm using this in my class, for example, and I don't want my learners to actually see um, who's doing what, because sometimes this most can actually mark the work, um, as you can see. And sometimes um, the learners don't want everyone to know how far they are, for example. You can make use of the anonymous feature. So if I'm going to click anonymous, the names will instantly change. So how do I know who is who? So Amy of, of Amy Radunskaya um, is this one. So that is me. So if I want to know where I am, I can just look there on the board and see there's my name and that name corresponds. So everything here is my stuff. So you as the teacher, how do you know who is who? You just keep your cursor there and now I can see this is Melissa 
and this is Fergus and this one is Adam Matt and this one for example is Boltney so that is a way for you to know who is who by just keeping the cursor there right so now I'm just gonna open up my screen so that I can show you what the teacher would see so this is the summary of every slide so if I'm gonna go for example to teacher this is the first slide that you can see it is highlighted in yellow so I can actually see here that what the learners have selected so for example this one if I'm clicking on it I can even write a feedback to my learner so this is let me just change the names again um, Ferger, Fergus so this is really cool uh, absolutely um, and I can send um, this message to him and he would be able to read my feedback um, the same goes to all the learners unfortunately the learners won't be able to write back to you only the teacher can write to the learner if I want to go to the next slide I can click on there and I can look at my learners responses so most of you selected divided by three none of my learners selected the other options so if someone did get it wrong you can instantly just intervene with those learners so for example you can actually go in the slide and see what the learners has done and this little camera there is just to take a snapshot so I've taken a picture of this for example it can be a drawing anything else and I'm going to show you later how do we get access to that um, if I'm going to go to my third slide I can also see here that one learner selected float um, add one float and one anchor and two said add one float etc right the fourth one there now I can see most of my learners in today's session love oranges so there is the result a nice way to collect data from your class um, the fourth one um, I see two of my students they love dogs and one love a cat and there's the sixth one I can see the graph I can click on it and I can play it I can actually see what my learner have drawn so there you can see how the turtle is moving and if I want to go to my next one um, let's try this one from Tatum uh, what an interesting graph you have Tatum so I can actually see how my turtle is moving um, I, I want to see what is happening here because that looks let's see you so they there's quite a number of turtles so maybe you want to write something to this learner you can make use of the chat on top and just say interesting and send so now this child would be able to get this message instantly right so i'm just going to close that now i'm going to go to my next one my dad um, not applicable and so on um, there's one also i can click on the card i can see there you can take a picture of that and even print it later or whatever you feel comfortable doing with the picture there's your confidence level you what is this i've done this in years but i know this is that where you have that bracket stuff well done um then you have the tenth one there's some cards and then this is the last one etc so there you can see already by snapshot i've taken two pictures so if i'm gonna go to snapshot i will find my images there so i can basically just drag it here make it big or add some questions and do some reflections in class now that is desmos for you um then another thing that i would like to show you let me just go to summary so there's my students everyone is busy and when your learners is busy you are more than welcome to leave your page you can even close the browser look here i'm gonna close the browsers now all my browsers and maybe tonight you want to go there again you can just strictly go to desmos 
first one sign in so i'm already signed in because i'm using my computer and then i'm gonna go to browse activities and then you can just go to custom activities and you're gonna open up this one because this was the one that you worked on and now you can just click on desmos and it will bring you back to this and everyone will still be signed in and now you can just see everyone is still busy and the green means that you have left a, a comment for this specific learner and there you also left a, a comment to a specific learner and also if you want to for example do the same lesson to a different class you can add another single code so for another 48 hours create so now you can actually have a, a lesson for for another class here so this is the one that we've done and then this is the extra one for for another class and you can even create another one another one in for if you're teaching five classes you can have five codes for the same lesson for five different classes um, so how do we get there it's the last thing that I want to show you so if you want to explore this most create your own activities you can go to custom activities and it says they create a new activity so if I'm gonna go there and I'm just gonna type in mathematics example two and create and now you can just play around here and create your own slides and when you are done you can just publish i'm not gonna publish because i'm not gonna create a lesson now because it's gonna take more than an hour to create to show you or do a demonstration on how to create a desmos lesson so from my side that is everything that i wanted to teach you if you have any questions now we have about 15 minutes for questions of if there's something you want me to demonstrate again now is the time to ask um this is a lot in a very short amount of time what i saw that what i liked in the student view is that there is accessibility features do you mind just going there to um, um, so if show I'm the accessibility the student version. in the student version. In the student. Yes, okay, as a student. Uh, so then, if you click on the three lines on the left hand side, uh -huh. the three lines next to your okay. name, the accessibility yeah. settings. Okay. So you can, if you click on the law, the white A, the screen becomes bigger. Oh, I didn't even know this, Melissa, because I'm never in the student's view. Now, I'm always looking for accessibility features, and I think this is quite okay. a nice one. It is. Let me just make it bigger. Oh, okay. So, if you have a child I'm who's just... struggling to read, it becomes bigger for them, and they are able to now read it. And I think that is very nice that they've thought about mm. um, learners 